It's been a minute, I know, and you're never gonna believe where I've been. Anyway, I'm gonna talk about Lance, again. So after I made my Why You Should Play Lance video, uh, a good 30 of you requested an advanced Lance guide, and my initial plan was to make that guide and then fuck off to the void. But as I was working on it, the YouTube algorithm must have read my mind or stolen a sample of my blood or something, because this video got recommended to me. And I was watching this video, and I was like, damn, why do I even bother? Why do I even bother? No, but seriously, this video is really, really good. So if you just want a nice general introduction to the weapon lance in world, just watch this video. Don't worry, you're not gonna be missing much of that Henry flair because I had my fun with the why you should play Lance video. So the guide was gonna be very serious and straightforward anyway. Like this YouTuber posted his script in the description and our scripts were pretty much the exact same thing. Instead, what I'll do is I'll cover a couple of advanced Lance things in this video. Just extra tips that could help you. I'll reiterate a couple of things mentioned in that other video that I think are especially important and I'll cover any new Iceborne specific things and Clutch Claw stuff. Sound good? Cool. All right, first let's talk the Clutch Claw. Lance actually has one of the better Clutch Claws in the game, and I love the Clutch Counter, but we're not gonna talk about that just yet. First, we're gonna talk about some cool Clagger stuff you can do with the Lance. So thanks to the Clutch Counter and Lance being a heavy weapon, you'll be able to keep things tenderized pretty easily and sometimes you'll get a clagger, but the spot that you want to tenderize is already tenderized. So what do you do with this clagger? Well, I'm sure many of you have heard of the clutch cancel. Not super advanced stuff, basically. If you clutch claw onto a monster during a clagger, you can actually just hop off, but the monster will stay there for almost the amount of time it would take for you to do your clutch claw attack. Now doing the clutch cancel with the lance flows very nicely. As soon as you get the clagger, if you're in range, you can do three pokes, clutch claw, let go, and do three more pokes. As you can see, this will be significantly more damage than just doing the tenderize attack again. One thing that you're gonna wanna practice is doing your triple pokes and then quickly clutch clawing without messing up. I used to screw this up a lot in the beginning. But yeah, that's a nice little way that the lands can take advantage of claggers. If it's a monster that's like really dramatic and like really steps back with the clagger, what you'll have to do is guard dash forward into your lance thrust, one attack, and then clutch claw. The one attack that you do is to just end the end lag of the thrust. It, it'll just be faster. So yeah, guard dash into thrust, into one hit, into clutch claw. And sometimes the thrust will actually get you in range and land. So that's some nice little extra damage. Another cool little clutch claw thing. So the lance can actually aim its clutch claw, or rather the slinger shot, uh, while guarding. And while you're doing this, this counts as a guard, pretty much. Um, and it can block a number of things depending on your guard level. Now a cool thing that you can do is you can actually aim it in preparation for a roar. If a monster is about to roar, you know, kind of like the, the intro, like I see you roar, or you know it's coming, you can get into your slinger aim position, block the roar, and then go right into your clutch claw, and then do whatever you want, you know, kick it into the wall, or get your tender eyes off. I really like to start a lot of solo lance hunts this way, because it's just a really easy way to get a safe early tender eyes and activate agitator early or just get an early wall bang, like with relatively no risk. One more thing about the clutch claw or the clutch counter now in specific. As I mentioned in the why you should play Lance video, it's dope. It's probably one of the coolest clutch claw maneuvers in Iceborne. But one of the awesome things about it is that it gives you super armor when you do it. So what does that mean? If you clutch counter and the monster continues to do stuff, you won't get knocked off, whether it does a roar or even a full out attack. You will take damage though, keep that in mind. 
but yeah, you won't get knocked off. And a nice thing that you can do is that the armor will stay there even if you move to a different spot. So if there's a monster that is continuously attacking you with the spot that's already tenderized, a good example is maybe like Tigrex who uses his face to attack. You can actually clutch counter and then move to another spot. And if you're quick enough, you can tenderize that spot too and the armor will still protect you. So that's just a nice way to take advantage of your clutch counters. And again, if that spot is already tenderized. Power guard stuff. Before anything, remember that while power guarding, I did the P so hard. While power guarding, you take more chip damage. A lot of players tend to forget this. It's become much more known now, but yeah. So don't power guard moves that deal multiple big hits uh, because it might protect you from the knockback, but you'll just die. Um, so yeah, sometimes it's just better to do a regular guard uh, and it might be more safe than power guarding certain moves. A lot of the vibe checks in the game, a lot of them are just better to guard instead of power guard. Now, as several of you might know, the power guard gives you a full 360 range of protection. So it'll block attacks from the side, from behind you, whatever. But the cool interaction with this is that any knockback received will only come from the direction you're facing. So you can power guard backwards as a means to move yourself closer to the monster. You can use this either to protect yourself from subsequent hits of a multi-hit attack or just to get yourself closer and counter successfully right in its face or something like that. This will vary depending on your level of guard. For example, if you have too much guard for a set attack, you won't move. But if you have little enough guard for the knockback to happen, you can use this trick. Uh, I like using it against Safi when I run guard three instead of guard five to push myself closer to him. Another very small tip with the power guard is that you can actually power guard after getting hit into the knockback state with Lance. Um, not a lot of people know this. I, I never really see anyone else do it. There's not always a reason to do it. You can just power guard first, but if you get caught in the middle, like you were trying to counter something and you get caught into knockback, you can power guard after and then counter. I actually love this because it kind of feels like you're standing your ground and fixing your stance and then, you know, countering back. It's pretty cool. Last cool power guard thing is that after a successful power guard or just out of the power guard animation in general, uh, you can charge. And sometimes this is really clutch in case the power guard actually knocked you out of range. You can use the charge to close the gap while also doing damage in the process, which is dope. By the way, guard levels do affect the power guard. So you wanna take that into account when you're making your sets. Actually, while I'm on it, let me talk about guard levels real quick. The other video does talk about this, but it's just good to know. Um, obviously guard is a hugely synergistic skill with Lance. Oh, fucking no. You could see it almost as a DPS increase. Uh, instead of like investing points into this defensive thing. Uh, Lance is one of the weakest weapons in the game. So the only way we can really keep up in damage is just not stopping. Like we just want to keep attacking. So being able to just guard and plow through a lot of attacks to just continue the damage is a DPS increase. So bringing the right level of guard is really important for certain hunts. Um, you can not bring guard, but you're gonna put yourself in some rough spots. So, you know, one, three, and five is really what you'll be using. Two and four, those don't matter. The main reason you'll be bringing guard is really just for changing the interactions of your guard dashes and your counters. Like those are the main reasons. You wanna be able to, depending on different monsters, you wanna be able to counter things really easily with very little effect to your, your combos, your DPS, or guard dash through a lot of things. For me, I love, just being able to guard dash through a lot of things. And sometimes I'll bring more points in guard just for that. But it affects different monsters. For example, you, you can bring guard one against the Glavinus or Tigrex and Brute Tigrex, but guard three is gonna give you more openings and allow you to just, you know, guard dash through a lot of different things. And then there's cases like Young Garuga who doesn't necessarily need guard five, but you can bring it for just a couple of more openings. 
just off the top of my head, the only monsters that really need guard five are like uh, Rajang, uh, Furious Rajang, uh, Kolv, Safi, Alatreon, Alatreon, AT Namiel. You can bring it against regular Namiel. Uh, Ruiner Nurg is more comfy with guard five. And like Chara, final boss. Guard five is good for him too. Since I talked about guard, I might as well talk about just other important land skills. I probably should have made a, like an organized list. I'm just free flowing here. I hope this is okay. You know what I'll do instead? I'll just put the uh, two main sets that I use. Um, one of them is pretty much the Safi mix set. So as you attack, you'll be killing yourself with the Safi set bonus. Uh, honestly, it's not too hard to manage with Lance. Like the Safi set bonus is pretty manageable. I actually really like it because it, it gives, it adds some more risk to Lance. Um, but if you're not feeling too comfortable with the Safi set, then you can run this peak performance set in, instead. instead. Um, and the EFR is not that much lower and it's a little safer and you don't have to worry about dying to resentment, but you do have to worry about keeping peak performance up, which could also be tough against some monsters. Yeah. At the time of making this video, these are like the two go-to meta sets that I use. Uh, I kind of mentally checked out after Elatrion dropped, so I don't know if his gear has changed anything, but I doubt it. Lance is like so unaffected by elemental stuff. The elemental values of Lance are, are just trash. So don't worry about that. And then someone can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, Lance's main combo. Uh, if the monster is downed or whenever you can, just poke, 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 charge. Poke, 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 charge. This is the that is the highest uh, DPS combo for Lance. It's like the most, that's what you do if the monster's down. Other, other than that, you adapt to whatever's going on in the hunt. Yeah, I guess that's it, guys. Those are my somewhat advanced Lance tips, and hopefully this helps you bring your Lance gameplay to the next level. Lance is a lot of fun, man. And, uh... Hopefully the future games will keep it that way. Anyways, guys, thank you for your patience. Sorry for being gone for so long. Uh, gonna be working on kind of getting back into the flow of making videos, kind of changing some things up. But thank you guys so much for your support. I've been streaming a lot more, so if you uh, miss me talking about stuff or you just miss my face, uh, I've been streaming a lot. So check me out on Twitch. And yeah, I've been feeling pretty good. I've been feeling pretty good. I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.